everyone and welcome to the Shelby the McCall channel. I'm Carly. I'm Dan. And this is Shelby and today we're going to be doing part two of baby McCall behaviours ah. that you might not know about because Google doesn't provide the answers. Let's get straight ah. into it. Bad Google. We are going to start ah. with hand feeding. Mums will feed these little ones up to a year old so they would eat food ah. and then regurgitate their food to feed these little ones. And it's really ah. funny actually because if you feed these and you hit them in the sweet spot, they make this. It's this, ah. this funniest thing, isn't it? It, uh, 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 look. Ah. <laughs> it uh, it's obviously how a beak would obviously go in for their mums ah. and hit it. It's a natural response. Wants to it squeezing ah. all the birds beak, mums beak pushing on the side of ah. their little cheekies. Because they need, or because their parents regurgitate for them for up to a year, you may faint. Fuck that. You may find that your ah. under one year old macaw is also asking for hand feeding. And there's a few things ah. to this. So if you're taking a baby bird in and they're ah. sort of the three to six month age, you should still ah. be giving them a hand feed. Ah. Stopping hand feeding far too early is detrimental ah. to their health and detrimental to, detrimental to their future behavior. Ah. Stopping hand feeding too early can cause really major future behaviour ah. problems. So don't be pressured into stopping hand feeding too early. Ah. However, there is also the other side to this where you should not be hand feeding for too long ah. either. I would certainly say by 10 months you want to be ah. stopping entirely. I know someone recently that is still hand feeding and I mean hand ah. feeding her two year old macaw because she's done it for so long that she actually can't stop now and the bird is, ah. if the bird doesn't get his hand feed, then he's really, really um, Like bad this, honky, like a, like a baby, when they shouldn't be like that at two ah. years old. Hand feeding ah. should be taught by a professional. When we picked ah. Shelby up from her breeder, he taught us the right consistency ah. of the formula, how warm it should be. He taught us that how to tilt her head, how to feed her. Ah. This is so important because you can end up killing ah. your baby bird if you're not taught properly to do it. Ah. It should drown them. And choke, cause yeah. them to choke. Um, the other thing ah. you need to be considering when you're hand feeding and if you're still hand feeding ah. is definitely try not to stop it too early. And I know I've already said that, but it's really important. Also, it cannot be too cold because that can cause thrush in the top and it cannot be too hot because that can burn the top. Moving on to the second thing, and I'm trying to shout over Shelby's honking, is perching and sitting at the bottom of the cage. Now we got Shelby and we completely freaked when the first couple of nights we found her sitting on the floor of her cage. And we eventually realised that this is because their feet and their leg muscles aren't developed properly yet. And she was only three and a half months old when we got her. So she had not yet developed the right leg and feet muscles to perch for extended periods of time. So if your very young baby macaw is perching at the bottom of a cage, um, I wouldn't be overly concerned. Adults sitting at the bottom of the cage, different story, you need to be seeing a vet. But babies, if they're sat in the bottom of the cage, they're still learning to perch, they're still learning to hold their weight for long periods of time. So sitting at the bottom of the cage is not the end of the world. Now we're going to talk about nuts, seeds and rewards. When we first got this little monster, she didn't know what a nut was. She didn't know what a seed was. She didn't know what training was. So this was something we had to teach her. And I remember the first day we actually got Shelby, we like showed her a nut and she just held it in her mouth and was like, what am I, what, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> spat it out. <laughs> and spat it out on the floor. We're going to start by just clicking and rewarding. Good girl. Hey, there's a nut there. No, no, no. She doesn't know how to take a drink. <laughs> I'm sorry, here you go. Can you eat it? Good girl. Good girl. That was nice. Was that nice? So she, I don't think she's ever had many treats before or many nuts before. And in this bag, I've got a variety of crushed up nuts of different sizes. Um, she actually just spat that one out, but we'll try again. Here you go. What's up there? You don't know how to take a treat, do you? No, we're not stepping up. <laughs> so I think we need to first teach her how to take a treat. Also, she didn't know how to hold food with her feet, mm -hmm. what they would naturally do as a grown-up grown, grown, up, grown up bird. So this is something we had to train her. 
and teach her as we went on and through training as well so training her to have a tree as in a nut or a seed when she does something wrong and this is what we did through clicker training if your bird like shelby didn't doesn't show an interest in nuts and seeds at the beginning don't panic about it but do try and find something else to use instead of that as a reward so instead your bird might like a cuddle or praise or clapping or excitement or strokes or whatever just find something to use in place of nuts and seeds as a treat just to keep their um their motivation going to keep them to keep reinforcing that positive behavior but just don't be alarmed if your bird's spitting seeds and nuts out it doesn't mean they're broken it just means they haven't yet fully come to terms with what those things are and they haven't worked out yet that those are important parts of their diet i know shelby's first one she loved bananas because they're mushy yeah. and really gooey what are they um in the beginning, just like human babies, coordination is really bad. Holding things with your hands is like, you just, you drop things and you're, you're clumsy. Babies are exactly the same. They have to learn how to hold food with their feet. And at first they don't know how to do it. They're really clumsy, they drop it all the time. They like, don't know where their mouth is and they're trying to uh, find their face. Um, it's really, really fun to watch, but they do need to learn how to use their feet. And there's different ways of doing that. Things like perching, different perches and um foot toys and sort of like uh, finger foods things like bits of um like sticks of carrot and sticks of stuff for them to hold it teaches them to use their feet and strengthen those muscles i will say for perching reasons use natural wood yeah we, don't use dowel rods or natural wood what they would use in the wild is so much easier for them they can hold it better with their feet and it's just natural for them to do this. Their feet need to wrap round no more than three quarters of the perch. If it's too small and their feet are sort of curling on their on itself, then it's too small. But different sizes is fine. If you've got lots of different size perches, you're fine. Next thing is molting. Babies will molt for the first time within a year. And guys, when I say they look scruffy and trampy and look like you don't treat them right, <laughs> This is what happens when you have a baby macaw. Literally, she looked the biggest tramp going. Looked like we didn't treat her right, didn't feed her the right diet. It's someone, not that. Someone stopped us and was like, oh, is she a plucker? And I was like, no, yeah. she's not. <laughs> she's molting. It's a baby thing. Don't be too concerned about it. If you see her ripping out feathers, then obviously you need to be concerned. But if it's just a natural fallout, they're not going to care about their feathers. They're not going to want to preen their feathers as much because they're babies. They don't have to imp like impress themselves for a mate. Shelby was awful at preening and stuff like that. She's only really come into it as she's got older. But her coat was really scruffy. As you can tell, her tail feathers really scruffy. Her wing feathers. And she was full of pin feathers. During a molting period, they do need extra fat and protein on top of the extra fat and protein they need to grow and because their bones are growing. So again, there's no too much fat and protein during a molting. Also be aware that during molting, babies can be super moody and we've had some like proper scruffy days with Shelby where she's been bitey and horrible. Um, again, that's really normal. It can be really uncomfortable for them as well and painful and itchy and just sensitive. You might find if you catch one, they like sort of cry in pain. They're really painful. So extra showers during that time. Um, is probably much needed for them. Also, you'd be glad to know that those stress bars and the black lines that they're on that are on their baby feathers will start growing out and replacing with brand new, nice, nipped feathers as long as everything's okay. You may still find the odd stress bar. I wouldn't be too concerned. Anything under the age of two, they're still going to have those stress bars on their feathers, um, but they will get less and less and less until they get older. Not easy. And <laughs> So, Honestly. um, and also in their youth, they're still going to re-damage those feathers as well. So again, don't be concerned if they're still snapping tail feathers and, um, getting themselves into the right old mess because the babies, that's what they do. This is it for part two. We will put up a part three at some stage, but if you like this guys, then please subscribe, put a group, us a great big thumbs up and let us know in the comments anything what you would like to know about a baby macaw or if you've had any experience with baby macaws and you want to let us know stuff fantastic and we will be happy to answer your questions and put it out there be sure to subscribe to the channel for more macaw stuff and we will see you in the next video in our next video <laughs> see you later guys <laughs> <laughs> in the
wild parents prepared to take for up to a year. Please stop stroking my ass. <laughs> when we collected Shelby from her breeder, he then talked us. He talked us. He talked us through. He taught. And we will see you in the next video. In our next video. See you later, guys. I'm trying to burp. See you later. See you in our next video. <laughs>